Why am I predicting bust for James Conner in 2019? For those of you that really know my content and follow me, you might be getting tired of me talking about James Conner and being a potential bust in 2019, but a lot of you may not have seen that content, or maybe I'm just not happy with the fact that everybody keeps drafting James Conner as a top seven to eight running back in 2019. Either way, I'm here again to drop another James Conner bust video. For those of you that don't know me, before you freak out and call me some kind of James Conner hater, let me remind you that I've already challenged anybody to go find a writer that was higher on James Conner heading into 2018 than I was that predicted bigger bold predictions for the guy before anybody even expected Le'Veon Bell to even hold out. He's a top 10 running back play anytime he's starting for that offense behind that Pittsburgh Steelers offensive line. So nobody can tell me that I can't say something about James Conner from an unbiased perspective. I can and I am. The reason I'm down on him in 2019 is going back to what I always preach risk versus reward. ADP versus risk. ADP pitted against upside. James Conner's being drafted in the 7 to 10 range for running backs in 2019. That leaves no room for error. It leaves no room for anything. Missed games, uh, a bigger role for Jalen Samuels. You're buying at the peak. This is like buying a stock when you know the stock can only go down or dip or go through peaks and valleys. James Conner missed week 14, 15, and 16 last year because he broke down. He couldn't handle the workload that's required of a Pittsburgh Steelers running back. And while I'm not going to preach that Jalen Samuels has some long elite future in the NFL, he's this year's version of James Conner. He is the sleeping giant behind a guy that I believe is overvalued. Could James Conner feasibly play an entire season in 2016 and tear it up? Sure, but the odds are against it given he already broke down last year. He's going to be asked to play a role that I don't think he's capable of playing. Now, if Jalen Samuels were to start week one, I don't know that he would hold up either with the amount of work being force-fed through the number one running back. But the difference is in the ADP. The difference is in the risk versus the reward. If Jalen Samuels is going in the 10th round, 12th round, I've seen him go all over the place. He has value. James Conner as a top 7 to 10 running back is more risk, way more risk than he is reward. If you compare the two together, you're in a much safer place. But mark my words, this will be the one duo that will be really tough to handcuff in 2019 because you're going to have people like me scooping Jalen Samuels up a round or two earlier than I should because I know the value in stashing him on my bench. Let me drop a little more truth on you. Eddie Faulkner is now the running backs coach for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Guess who Eddie Faulkner coached in college? Jalen Samuels, and he used him a lot in the passing game. He loves the guy. If you think there might not be any buzz potentially on the horizon where somebody asks a question to a Pittsburgh Steeler coach, especially if it's Eddie Faulkner. Hey, Who's your starting running back in 2019? Is it James Conner without question? One hesitation, one mention of Jalen Samuels, one mention of, oh, we're going to use both our running backs. We have two number one running backs on our roster. One mention of anything along any of those lines. You're going to watch James Conner's value plummet. There's no room for peaks and valleys at top seven to nine running back value. There's no room for injury. There's no room for controversy. There's no room for anything. That's when you know you're buying at a value that is just way too high. You shouldn't have red flags with your number one overall pick in 2019 fantasy football. There are a plethora of safer options around James Conner and his draft slot in 2019. Oh, look at this. SleeperU.com. Learn about it.